In this episode of the SPS podcast, we're going to be talking about how you avoid distractions. Let's get into it. Welcome to the SPS podcast, the self-performance strategies podcast, unlocking the secrets of self-performance so you can improve mentally, emotionally, and physically. The goal of this podcast is to help you create even more freedom of time, money, and purpose in your life. And the SPS podcast is brought to you by the 30 day pro accelerator program. If you want to find out more about that, check the show notes and click the link and head on over to stephentimony.com. Let's get in to the episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 21 of the SPS podcast of the self performance strategies podcast. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about how you avoid distractions. And I'm going to take you through an exercise that I share with my clients about how to avoid distractions. And I call it the distraction spiral because normally when we get into distractions, it's a spiral that starts. We start off by thinking about something that leads us to opening up a different tab or picking up our phone. And the next thing you know, half an hour has gone by and we've wasted that time, that peak time earlier on in our day where we should be doing high dollar and high value work and we've wasted that time on senseless distractions. So I want to give you the tools to avoid distractions in this episode of the SPS podcast. But to start, like we always do in every episode, let's frame this conversation with a quote. And this one comes from a gentleman called Tom Kite. And he said, you can always find a distraction if you're looking for one. I 100% agree with this. If you're open to distraction, you will find a distraction. And a lot of times, the reason why we're open to distractions and the reason why we'll find a distraction quite quickly is that we lack a strong sense of purpose. Because in my viewpoint, in my life, I believe that the best defense from distractions is a strong sense of purpose. And a strong sense of purpose gives you high standards each day that you have to maintain or you you have to reach if you want to be successful. And in my own life, part of having high standards is not letting distractions destroy my focus in those peak productivity hours, in that peak focus time, that time in the morning when my brain is cognitively at its best, I avoid distraction. And that's part of my high standards. That's a rule I have. I will not let distraction into my life during those four to six hours each day. Am I 100% at it? No, of course I'm not. I'm not a Jedi Knight. I'm not a monk. I will always probably (laughs) always make mistakes, maybe get 80% right, 90% right, some days 60% right. But it is one of my rules. It's a standard. Let's put distractions aside during those peak hours of the day. Because you and I know this. You and I 100% know this. We all love distractions. We love the dopamine hit distractions give us. We love that dopamine, but it's a productivity killer. I think Andrew Huberman who has that fantastic podcast, The Huberman Lab, he had this quote that said, chasing dopamine without effort will destroy you. Now, I might be paraphrasing that, but I I think that's a fantastic quote because that type of dopamine, that type of distraction, it's rewiring your brain to always focus on new and exciting things. And yes, new and exciting things are fun, but when we're talking about short form content on TikTok and Instagram, on YouTube, on Netflix, whatever that is, That's not healthy for us. That's destroying our brains. It's not letting us focus. It's taking us away from deep focus. But for me, the reason why we get into that distraction is because we lack clear goals and clear direction in life. And a lot of people do. There's a stat out there saying that something like 95% of people don't write down their goals. I think something like 80% of people don't don't even have goals. And another like 10 or 15% of people have goals but don't write them down but only something like five percent of people actually write down their goals and i've talked about this before in other podcasts i've talked about on the twitter timeline i think i've even mentioned it on maybe one or two of my youtube videos i am blown away by that stat 95 percent of people don't have their goals written down no wonder we live in a world of distraction 
So if, if you want to start be beating distraction, if you want to start avoiding distraction, if you want to move away from those cheap dopamine hits, you need to start getting very clear on your goals, your direction, your vision, creating your purpose, because that's going to help you create those windows of deep focus because you know what you're working on. You know what you're moving towards. You've got a sense of purpose. You know your why. And when you have those in place, you will find it easier to commit to certain windows in your day where you avoid distraction. If you find a way to have your favorite distractions locked away, you will be able to do more work. So for me, my favorite distractions are soccer news, jumping on social media. There's a bunch in there <laughs> watching movies that might come out that I'm interested in, new TV shows. Nine movies and TV shows are very low on my list, but I know I can be distracted by them. But part of my process is to actually write them out and call out my top distractions. I have a, a, a dumb shit list. You might have heard me talking about dumb shit before, but my distractions are on that dumb shit list. And then this is where I want to talk about the exercise, the distraction spiral with you, because I know I want to talk about, well, once you know your distractions, how do you avoid them? How do you plan to avoid them? And how do you not fall into this distraction spiral? And, and you know what I mean by distraction spiral? I mentioned that a little bit at the start of the podcast. You know, you're working on something. There's a little bit of a break. The next thing you know, you've got another tab open on your computer and you're down a rabbit hole of distraction or you picked your phone up, you opened up TikTok and boom, 30 minutes goes. And that's the distraction spiral because you're spiraling from deep focus into pure distraction. And the, the further you spiral down that direction, the harder it is for you to get back to deep focus. So if we can remove the distractions during the peak hours, we're going to be in much better shape. So how do you stop? Stop. How do you stop? I'll say that more clearly. <laughs> how do you stop the distraction spiral? Well, we're all distraction addicts. Sorry, but we're hooked on that shit. Let's just get that clear. Uh, we have certain mental triggers that make us check our phones. Uh, they might get us thinking about the past. We get frustrated with situations and then we lean on dopamine and distraction to make us make us feel better. You let your mind spiral and repeat negative actions, thoughts and patterns that distract you from maintaining your focus. And this happens. It happens in my life. 100% happens in my life. When something shitty happens in my day, the first thing I will probably lean to is short form TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, dopamine hit just to make myself feel better. You know, you feel a little bit distracted for five minutes because you had some bad news. And you're just trying to like make yourself feel better, but it, but it actually makes you feel worse. It's probably better just to sit and start a wall <laughs> for five minutes. Honestly, it is. But another quote that springs to mind as I'm talking uh, is by Will Durant. You know, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellent then is not an act, but a habit. I think I've got that right. We are repeatedly what we do. Excellent then is not an act, but it's a habit. So if we're constantly getting distracted, we're creating this habit in our minds. We're creating distraction as a habit. Distraction becomes something that we're, become, that we're very good at. It, it becomes a core habit. Now, habits can be positive or negative. Smoking is a bad habit. Distraction is a bad habit. But when we repeatedly lay those tracks in our mind, we are creating excellence in a bad habit. Distraction has become one of the things that you're amazing at. You're Olympic level distraction. That's what we've created. Olympic level distraction in our minds. Because we've let those triggers become habits. And that's why you spiral down, then doom scroll or Netflix binge or spend hours procrastinating when you know it's work time, not relax time. I fuck, I hate that feeling. I hate that feeling of when you're watching a TV show or a movie and you know you should be doing something else, but yet you're hooked on the TV show, you're hooked on the dopamine and you feel this real uncomfortable emotional pool, you feel dirty almost and you're watching the TV show, oh, you're playing a video game or something, but in the back of your mind, you almost get a bit sweaty. <laughs> Getting sweaty now, you're thinking about it, where you're like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm distracting myself. But how do you avoid avoid the distraction spiral? And this is the exercise. This is the exercise. I'll get into it now. I got a little I got a little sidetracked there in this episode of the SPS podcast. But let's get into it. Let's teach you the exercise. I want you to take 10 minutes and write down your four or five key distractions. Whether it's websites, your phone, social media apps. I want you to write down the core distractions that you have in your life. And then write down anything you think that triggers the distraction spiral. Whether it's bad news, whether it's lack of focus, whether it's you're tired, whether it's you, you don't know what you're doing. These triggers should include internal thought patterns and the external 
stimulations that happen. Now, what do I mean about internal thought patterns? Internal thought patterns are the thoughts that start going through your head when you want to open that tab or pick up your phone or, or go and do whatever distraction that you listed out just earlier. Now, the external stimulation might be your phone ringing, uh, your wife calling you, someone coming into your office, and then what happens is that you don't get back into deep focus after that. You, you then lean on distraction. After that external stimulation or that external situation happened to you, you then fall into the distraction spiral because you pulled yourself out of deep work and you now think there's an opportunity for you. Oh, well, I'll check the news, I'll check sports, I'll, I'll do a little bit of distraction before getting into my back into my work, which is actually the wrong thing to do. You should really get up and go for a walk and you know reset yourself or, or meditate quickly, take a couple of deep breaths. But I digress, we'll get into that in a second later on the podcast of how you reset yourself. Now, when you read something that triggers you, what thoughts lead you to stop working and get distracted? Now, if you could be reading the news, you could be reading something at work, you could be reading uh, an email from a, from a client. When you pause working, what are the thought patterns that make you reach for your phone or open a new tab? Now, I talked about that a little bit already, but you want to get specifically clear. What happens when you read something? You know, what, 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 what's the trigger that makes you get into distraction? What happens when you pause working and you get into distraction? And then the final area I want you to, to, to ask yourself, the final sort of example is like, what memories or feelings come up as you try to work that stop you from working? So you're, you're sitting at your computer, you're thinking about starting to do some work and some type of memory or emotion comes up feelings come up and you don't do the work and you end up being distracted. So those are the three areas I want to look at and I hope that's clear. You know, if you read something, what triggers you? If you pause working, what triggers you to distraction? Or what memory or feelings come up that trigger you to distraction? So you want to get really clear and think about this. Take all of these ideas, journal on each of them for five minutes. Each distraction that you've talked about, whether it's reading, whether it's pausing work, whether it's the memories and feelings, whatever it is, Every single one of them, you need to journal on them for about five minutes and write out the whole process, how the spiral starts, what the trigger was, and where you end up, okay? And if you're one of those people that has very negative habits, like drinking alcohol, or might even be a porn addiction, you know, getting dark into it here a little bit, but this will actually help you with that as well. What's the trigger? that takes you from doing some work or, or being happy in your day to you sitting with a can of beer in your hand or smoking a, a joint or doing a line of powder or sitting with your pants around your ankles in a bathroom with a, a phone in your hand. All of those types of distractions, coping mechanisms, you could say, they all start somewhere and that and that's the spiral. And that's the really sort of the darker side of the, the, the distraction spiral. Now, obviously, because I'm a productivity or self-performance coach, I'm talking about what keeps you from being focused during your work hours. But unfortunately, I know that a lot of us have, or some of us have these darker distraction spirals that go way past just going on social media. They, they, they go in the darker places when it comes to drugs and coping mechanisms. So this can help you if you have those as well. But I'm not a, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a specialist in that area. So I mentioned this just, just now just to let you know that the, this distraction spiral can lead to some dark places. But what I'm primarily focusing on here is just those key four to six hours in your day when you, when you should be really doing high, high dollar and high value work. So I just wanted to clear that out because some people doing this exercise, they might go pretty dark places when you're thinking about, you know, the, what's the distraction spiral for you? But bringing awareness to this process, bringing awareness to where your spiral starts and where you end up will give you better understanding and you'll be able to identify the thought triggers. You'll be able to identify what actually starts the spiral so you can start preventing that, avoiding that, putting your phone away, thinking about, well, if this person starts that spiral, how can I avoid this person for a certain amount of hours? If that makes sense. Now that you've identified the triggers, you need a system or plan to help you stay focused. The system that works for me, as you feel the spiral starting, you can take a few deep breaths, identify it, even journal quickly, and let that spiral pass and not get sucked into it. That is how I deal with a lot of my triggers now. Now, and initially when I first started doing this, sometimes even getting up and going for a walk used to be my response, especially if it to deal, especially if it dealt with being on the computer, opening up tabs. When I feel that happening, even to this day, I might go for a walk or completely get away from my computer and go and sit somewhere else in my house and just journal or stare, stare at the wall. Yes, I do stare at the wall sometimes. Now, 
The reason why I do that is because I, I didn't have the strength or the power to stay where I was sitting and avoid the distraction spiral. I had to remove myself from the situation. And avoidance is actually one of the best ways to to deal with addiction. And distraction spirals is an addiction for a lot of us. Now, this does take practice and you have to take time to journal out the, the thought process and the patterns that occur. It, it does take a lot of work. It's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. You know, how do you go from working on something to sitting on the sofa scrolling on Instagram? You need to find your triggers and build systems to stop the spiral. Journaling, walking, meditating, deep breathing, removing yourself from the environment, whatever that is, create a system that works for you. The upside to this is you will also find a handful of emotional underlying issues that you probably have avoided for a while. And these could be the triggers that send you into the sort of darker distraction spirals, the distraction spirals that might lead into some of those coping mechanisms. But once again, once you have awareness around these patterns and triggers, it gives you perspective to see things that they're happening. You get to see them, you get to understand, oh shit, this is happening. Uh, and this is one of the most powerful exercises I've ever used in my life. It helped me realize that I had deeper underlying emotional issues when it came to certain coping mechanisms, drinking, alcohol, partying. A lot of the times it was because I was unhappy and I couldn't focus on the work that I was doing because I didn't really have any goals or purpose in my life. I didn't really wanna do hard things. So when I was faced with hard things, I'd go and fall into these easier things and get distracted. I would go and watch Netflix for hours. I would crack a beer. I would go out and party at the weekend. I was avoiding life. And the more you avoid life, the more you will fall into this distraction spiral. So I go all the way back to the start of the podcast. And the reality is if you don't have clear goals, a clear vision, a strong why, and you aren't creating your purpose in your life, you will find it hard to defeat the distraction spiral. Now, if you build all those things into your life, then you use this exercise to peel back the layers off the distraction spiral because I'm being blunt here at the end of the 21st episode of the SPS podcast if you don't have goals and a direction in life there's not a lot I can do to help you with the distraction spiral because you don't have a purpose of why you're working on things and that, that's a serious tone that I'm putting in at the end of this episode if you don't have directions and goals and clarity built in you're going to find it hard to defeat distraction now you can use this exercise to help you like a band-aid, get things done quickly to help you understand what's going on, but not to repeatedly drive home a point, but I will because that's what I do. You need to have your goals and your vision and your why sorted if you want to eventually defeat all forms of distraction, whether that's light distraction with social media or whether that's dark distraction of coping mechanisms such as alcohol and drugs. Having a purpose and having a direction in life is really the answer to a lot of problems. Not all problems, some problems are deeper. I'm gonna say that right now again, not a therapist, but 99% of my problems over the last decade or so have been solved because of creating my purpose, because I had goals, because I had vision, because I had direction, because I had things I wanted to complete and work on. And that meant that when the distraction spiral hit, I was able to say, no, I don't want this right now because I've got this goal to hit. I've got to use my best hours of my day on the right things. Thanks very much for joining me for the 21st episode of the SPS podcast. I hope you got a lot out of this one. This one was a little darker, a little deeper, a little more real. And yeah, it was designed like that because distraction is an addiction that all of us have in society. All If you have a smartphone in your hand, you are addicted to distraction. It's just it's, that is, you are addicted to distraction. So I hope this episode has given you a path, a roadmap, and some ideas to help you defeat distraction. Because if you want to hit your biggest goals in your life, you're going to have to remove distraction from the key hours of your day. As always, if you want to hit me up on my socials, I'm at S-T-E-V-E-T-I-M-O-N-E-Y. That's at Steve Timoney on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And if you want to slide on over to my website if you need help defeating distractions i obviously have a coaching package and you can see that at stephentimony.com that's s-t-e-p-h-e-n-t-i-m-o-n-e-y.com 
and you can check out my 30 day pro accelerator program and defeating distractions is a key part of the first step of that program. So yeah, if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit me up and we'll have that conversation. But thanks very much again for joining me in this episode of the SPS podcast and we'll see you in the next one. Make it a good one.